welcome to the next lecture on biomolecules and the relationship to the structure and function of a cell. As we said cell is the fundamental functional unit of life. We have seen two stories so far, the first one was uh, about infection, what causes them and so on and we picked up a few things that are fundamental from that story such as microorganisms are there everywhere, the various types of microorganisms, the various types of cells, the two major types of cells and so on. And the second story was about uh, shear, uh, shear in a bioreactor and uh, the cells being exposed to shear and what could we do to um, make the cells more robust to shear. And we said that we could do that by understanding what causes the shear sensitivity and when we looked at that we came across a fundamental biomolecule, one of the four major classes of biomolecules called lipids defined in a vague fashion. It is defined lipids are biomolecules that are soluble, that are insoluble in water, but soluble in organic solvents. Let us leave it at that, that does not matter and we saw uh, what uh, lipids are, fat is a lipid, uh, butter is a lipid, oil is a lipid and lipids make up the cell membranes. This is what we have seen so far, this is where we left off last time. This time let us start with another story. The story is rather simple in its inception, but it goes on and it takes various uh, branches, various forms and we will probably learn some fundamental aspects from this story, various fundamental aspects. We will keep going off track from the story into some side stories and then come back to the main story pretty much at the end of this module. Okay. Why does curd form is the question that we are going to ask to begin this story. So, before that how is curd made, curd or yogurt as it is called in some countries, how is it made? It can be made at home, you take a vessel and uh, you put um, some milk into it, right take a vessel here, pour some milk into it. Milk is called the medium, this is a term that is used in biology, biology, biological engineering and so on, it is called the medium. Warm it up to let us say 37 degrees C in this particular case, add some old curd to it, okay. old curd is the inoculum as it is called another term, do not worry about it if uh, this term seems alien, you will get used to it. Close it, set it aside in a warm place and the mixture that has this inoculum medium initially and then something happens to the inoculum and something happens to the medium and all that is called the culture or the broth. In fact, the, the broth changes as time goes on when it is uh, set aside in a warm place and curd is formed in a few hours. Okay. The curd makers that maintain uh, this curd at 37 degrees C by plugging it into an electrical outlet, you can even get curd in about an hour and a half, two hours, very nice curd gets formed in maybe a couple of hours if a curd maker is used. At home it takes probably overnight uh, or maybe a few hours if you do it in the morning and so on. Let us use this as the basis for our story. Let us assume for a while that we know nothing about curd formation and ask the question why does curd form. Okay. Let us investigate this just by using the tools that some of us might know, some of us might be familiar with, it is basic, the tool is basically logic with some information, the scientific method and so let us investigate curd formation using this method. Since curd is forming from milk, something in the milk must be turning into curd, right? That is very logical. So, what does milk consist of? If you look at the data in this particular case, this is the source of the data, you do not have to worry about this paper, uh, this is just uh, additional information. If you are interested, you can go and read this paper, it is not included in the list of references, but you could take it from here and read this paper. Milk typically contains predominantly water, protein, fat, lactose, 
minerals uh, predominantly here. The cow's milk contains uh, for every 100 grams 88 grams of water, 3.2 grams of protein, 3.4 grams of fat, 4.7 grams of lactose and 0.72 grams of minerals ok that is cow's milk. Buffalo milk is slightly different and human milk is slightly different ok. So, this is the composition of milk. Since we are getting curd from milk something here must be undergoing some changes to provide curd. So, what could that be? The answer is acid formation and consequent protein aggregation is what causes curd formation ok. This is the answer uh, let me give you the answer right away and then dig deeper acid formation and as a result protein aggregation is what causes milk to turn into curd. Where does the acid come from ok that is the question that we are going to ask where is the acid coming from. The answer is from some among the thousands of reactions that occur inside what is called the lactic acid bacteria in the terms of genus and species it is called lactobacillus lactococcus lactis ok. This lactic acid bacteria lactococcus lactis is what was present in the inoculum the old curd that we added to the milk and each cell has thousands of reactions that go on at any given time and from some of those reactions acid comes and that acid gets out into milk and causes protein aggregation and that when done in a controlled fashion gets you milk ok. Same thing happens when you squeeze a lemon into milk ok you form paneer right you form cheese cottage cheese that happens quickly when you do that slowly in a controlled fashion with a lot of other flavors that get released as a part of this process then it becomes curd that is it let us dig a little deeper. So, this is one set of one of the thousands of sets of reactions that occur in the cell it is typically starts with glucose and this particular set of reactions ends with pyruvate glucose gets converted to glucose 6 phosphate gets converted to fructose 6 phosphate and so on and so forth until it gets to pyruvate. Pyruvate gets converted to lactic acid which gets out of the cell this is the cell that is here you could consider this as each lactobacillus cell. This set of reactions glucose to pyruvate is called glycolysis and each one is catalyzed by an enzyme we will come to that a little later. So, glucose to pyruvate has uh, these set of reactions as a name it is called glycolysis and as a result of this lactic acid gets formed as a result of two other reactions from pyruvate lactic acid gets formed which causes acidification and formation and curdling of milk. Now, what kind of a molecule is lactic acid which is what is causing the curdling let us ask that question. This is how lactic acid looks like you see here these are the carbon uh, atoms here there are two OHs here uh, this is a COOH group here and uh, this is an OH group here ok uh, there is a COH and a OH group here ok. Therefore, if you uh, if you write down the molecular formula it is going to be a C 3 H 6 O 3 1 2 3 C's and 1 2 3 O's and uh, if you fill in all the hydrogen atoms then you get a C 3 H 6 O 3 here. And from the structure you could write this is number 1, number 2, number 3 you know you need to give importance to COH all the naming conventions that you could follow and so on at the 2 position you have a hydroxy group therefore, 2 hydroxy this is a C 3 and therefore, propanoic acid ok basic chemistry organic chemistry. And therefore, uh, well this is a hydroxy propanoic acid lactic acid belongs to a class of biomolecules called carbohydrates and what is a carbohydrate 
it has a general formula C H 2 O the whole n you could represent it as C H 2 O the whole 3 then it becomes C 3 H 6 O 3 and so on and usually n is taken to be greater than 3 for a carbohydrate these are all usual things that happen the normal things that happen. So, anything with a formula C H 2 O n is a carbohydrate and carbohydrates are a large class or an important class of biomolecules. Earlier we saw lipids as one major class of biomolecules. Now, we are seeing carbohydrates as the second major class of biomolecules and these are all present in the various uh, as a part of uh, the reaction intermediates that happen uh, in the cell. Now, let us look at the next part. We said acid formation and then protein aggregation. Okay. Now, what is aggregation? Okay, what do we mean by aggregation from a microscopic sense? To understand that, let us ask the reverse question. What happens at a molecular level when a substance dissolves in water? Okay. We said curd forms when these molecules aggregate, right? the protein molecules aggregate and get out of water. To understand that a little better, let us uh, let us look at what happens at the molecular level when a substance dissolves in water. To understand that, let us look at an example of what happens when common salt dissolves in water. As you all know, common salt is NaCl, okay? and when it is dissolved in water, it splits up into its ions Na and Cl. And as you can see here, N A gets surrounded by a set of water molecules, C L gets surrounded by another set of water molecule, I mean another set of water molecules oriented differently. N A is positively charged and therefore, a certain orientation happens to the molecules of water that surround it, which is different from the orientation that happens to the molecule of C L that surrounds it. So, any substance that dissolves in water needs to have a set of water molecules that surround it. That is essentially what dissolution is at a molecular scale. Water happens to be an excellent solvent. Okay, now, we are off to one of our side tracks in the story. Uh, water is an excellent solvent. In fact, many properties of water impact life and uh, make life possible to begin with. Okay. Without water probably there would not have been a life as we know it. Why is that? Water has very many important properties that make life possible. Okay. Water at a molecular level has very many important properties. Water molecules sticking together because of the hydrogen bonds between the various molecules of water they tend to stick together a lot more than probably many other substances, many other compounds. What I just described is cohesion, which is sticking together of the same kind. Addition is water sticking on to other surfaces, that is what addition is. Okay. And addition to cohe and cohesion together determine a lot of uh, things that happen with life. I okay. will give you a video which very nicely explains how addition and cohesion are entirely responsible for the way the water gets uh, distributed to various parts of a tree and what happens in various other things that uh, of life that are uh, relevant for water and uh, are relevant in the context of water and so on. So, let me not get into this for the time being, but addition is the interaction of water molecules, the stickiness of water molecules to other surfaces, cohesion is sticking together of water molecules themselves. Okay. This results in a high surface tension for example, cohesion and makes even some insects to be able to walk on water, the water strider and so on. This third one uh, is a very important aspect, the solid density, the density of ice form of water is lower than the liquid density. Okay. The water has the highest density at around 4 degrees C that we know and water becomes a solid ice at 0 degrees C. When it becomes a solid, the structure of water actually opens up because it ne needs to have a crystal structure 
with the water molecules being kept at a certain distance because of the crystal needs and the density actually goes down a little bit and therefore, the solid ice density is lower than the liquid density is very rare uh, you know uh, not uh, many other substances in nature have this property where the solid is solid form is less dense than the liquid form at least at certain temperatures. What happens because of this in cold countries ice forms right ice forms on lakes rivers and so on and so forth and when ice forms because of the lower density of ice, ice floats it does not sink to the surface because it floats the water below can support life uh, that depends on water. If it solidifies probably it would not be able to support life and so this very property that the density of the solid is less than the density of liquid is what makes water what makes life possible in all those water bodies lakes rivers and so on and so forth in winter. We talked of surface tension and so on as a as an outcome of cohesion and I would like you to watch these two videos uh, you can take these as compulsory which explain nicely how these properties determine life how these properties of water determine life and why water is such an important molecule which makes life possible. Okay. I think these are given in uh, under item 13 these two videos both are under item 13. Please go and take a look at these videos they are very nice videos. Okay, Let us continue. Now, we said that if a substance dissolves in water it means that it is surrounded by a layer of water molecules. Okay. So, if a protein is dissolved in water as in the case of a protein in milk then there is a layer of water molecules that surround the protein and keep the protein in solution. Right. This is an example of a protein called lysozyme which is an important protein in the human body. This lysozyme is in an aqueous environment in water environment aqueous is water aqueous environment and it therefore, it is uh, let us say dissolved in water and which means it is surrounded by water molecules. So, we looked at what happens when a substance dissolved in is gets dissolved in water, but our original story was why curd forms and we said uh, acid formation we saw acid formation earlier and f uh, which causes protein aggregation. So, let us look at protein aggregation now that now that we understand why something is in uh, solution. Aggregation happens when molecules fall out of solution ok they are they get attracted to each other because of the lack of water molecules that surround them and then they come together and fall out of solution that is typically what happens when a substance falls out of solution. The reverse happens when the substance goes into solution and when there is not enough water surrounding it and they attract each other then it falls out of solution. Which protein aggregates okay, in, in the case of uh, curd formation? The answer many of you may know it it is called casein this is the protein that mainly aggregates when curd gets formed. From a molecular point of view why does a protein aggregate that is the next question that we are going to ask and before that we realize we do not really know what a protein is and therefore, we are going to ask the question from a molecular point of view what is a protein ok. And I think we will stop here uh, this lecture uh, we looked at carbohydrates and um, then we looked at uh, what happens when something dissolves in water and some properties of water. I think that is good enough information for now fundamental information for now you munch on it and then we, when we meet next we will take things forward see you then.